Hello everyone, welcome to LOMP Special Lecture Series featuring Ear Seed Acupressure and Auricular Therapy, Day 1 of 4. The art of healing with pressure over specific points on the ear is known as ear acupressure or auricular therapy. Ear hosts over 120 points that correspond to various parts of the body. Many people have heard of reflexology where the systems of the entire body is represented on the bottom of the feet or hands, auricular therapy is very much the same. In traditional Chinese medicine, the outer part of the ear, the auricle, views the entire body and organ systems in an upside-down fetus representation. Auricular therapy can be used to treat the same body systems as standard acupuncture. This form of therapy can treat not only musculoskeletal issues, but organ system dysfunctions, as well as addictions, weight loss, and smoking cessation. Treatments for addictions, weight loss, smoking cessation are popular options using auricular therapy. TCM teaches that energy pathways or chi or vital life energy pass through the ear. When you stimulate an acupoint, abundant flow of energy returns to the related organ or area, allowing healing to take place. How do I know if I need needles or just the ear seeds for treatment? Often, the initial visit or two will include needles and electrostimulation with the goal of reducing the level of pain or behavioral modifications down to just the ear seeds. The eventual goal, especially regarding treatment of addictions, is to teach the patient self-care using acupressure on those points most needed to calm cravings or withdrawal symptoms. The ear is said to be a micro-imitation of the human bodily system, comparing the shape of the ear to an inverted fetus. The mapping of inverted fetus to the outer ear roughly explains the connection between ear acupoints and their corresponding body parts. Auricular therapy unblocks energy meridians of the body, stimulates nerve connections between ear and central nervous system. By applying pressure to the correct points on the external ear, triggers nerve impulse from the ear to the brain, thereby communicating powerful healing messages to the organ or system in which the health problem manifests. Upon stimulation, the brain releases pain-relieving protein molecules, endorphins, into the bloodstream, soothing chronic pain and discomfort quickly and with no side effects. Instead of using needles to stimulate the acupoints, small beads can be used to apply pressure to the points. In TCM, seeds of natural vacaria plants are used as they are tiny enough to sit precisely over one pressure point. The seeds are vacaria seeds. The reason for using these seeds is primarily the size and composition. They are the size of an acupuncture point on the ear Plus, the shell is very hard and will not break down with the body oils. The seeds will typically stay in for 2-5 to five shampoo or showers. How will I know when to take them out or do they just fall out? When the seeds are ready to fall out, the adhesive will feel gooey and begin to slowly separate from the skin. Often, you will notice this happening when your hair gets stuck with the adhesive or you will just feel it. To remove the seeds, Lean your ear toward the floor and pull them off. The seeds are put in place using tapes. For people who are not sensitive to metals, they may opt for metal beads or pellets. Moreover, magnetized beads are said to further enhance the effectiveness of the ear acupressure. Question, is this method for weight loss preferred over ear stapling? Yes, definitely. The reason, quite frankly, is that ear stapling is an ear infection waiting to happen. Question, but is the ear stapling more effective for weight loss because it stays in 24-7 and for a much longer time? Before answering this question, let's define a term called homeostasis. Homeostasis is the ability of the body to maintain internal equilibrium by adjusting physiological processes despite constant varying external conditions including physical injury. The placement of the staple is in the area of the ear representing the stomach area. The selling point of those who promote this method state that it will tame hunger cravings 
24-7, initiating weight loss. Ear stapling is an injury to the ear. After a short length of time in the body's attempt to maintain homeostasis because of this injury, its hunger craving sedation ability is no longer effective. Application of ear seeds can be used alone or as complementary therapy to acupuncture or body acupressure in order to treat a host of symptoms. Benefits of using ear seeds can be used in the comfort of your own home, simple to adhere, help supplemental traditional acupuncture in between sessions, suitable for those who do not want to receive acupuncture or needle phobia, small, not extremely noticeable, no side effects, safe, wearers receive prolonged benefits, natural, holistic, drug-free relief, helps promote general well-being. Precautions not to use when pregnant, patients should consult doctors first. Do not apply when the ear is infected. Do not apply when the body is in very weak state, for example, when drunk, starved, super intense mind state. If skin irritation or swelling occurs, remove ear seeds and consult doctor if symptoms persist. Adhesive tape may contain latex. Slight irritation may occur if you are allergic. For people who may be allergic to latex, test the tape on the skin on a single location before applying to various points. Store the ear seeds in original packaging and keep out of sunlight to protect the adhesive. How to apply? To begin, you will need hair clip, alcohol, ear probe, set of tweezers, ear seeds. Use hair clip to secure hair away from the ear so that it does not contaminate the auricle during treatment or attach to the sticky tapes of the seeds. Remove ear jewelry and piercings. Palpation is process of detecting tender points for treatment. Apply equal pressure using a sterile stainless steel ear probe in palpating the points related to your condition, referring to placement chart. Mark the point for treatment by pressing with the probe so that you can remember it. Clean your outer ear, best with 75% alcohol swab. Make sure it is dry before applying ear seeds. Pick up the plaster with a pair of tweezers so as to touch the adhesive as little as possible. Affix the ear seed to the acupressure point on the ear. Continuous mild pressure that ear seed exerts is amplified by stimulating the seed with fingertip massage. Massage the ear seeds 3 to 5 times a day for about 30 to 60 seconds each time. A good time to massage is after meals and before sleep. Due to sweating and showering, the ear seeds usually need to be removed after 3 to 5 days or shorter during summertime. For better results, alternate the ear for application of ear seeds such that each ear has sufficient time to rest before acupressure points are stimulated again. Do not reuse ear seeds. In 1957, Paul Noget, MD, France, also a neurosurgeon, documented for the first time in recorded history a complete reflex map of the human body located on the outer ear. Dr. Noget is the father of auriculotherapy, the medical approach of diagnosing and treating illnesses with medical implements. Auriculotherapy is the medical approach to working with the reflex map of the body on the outer ear where licensed medical practitioners can legally diagnose, prescribe, and use implements to treat specific illnesses. Dr. Lilia Aquino Martinez Palanca, founder of LAM Foundation, who pioneered acupuncture in the Philippines, was one of the students of Dr. Paul Noget. In 1959, Nanjing Army Ear Acupuncture Research Team, China, verified Dr. Noget's ear reflex map and went on to discover a similar yet different ear reflex map. In 1972, Paul Noget, MD, published the first book on auriculotherapy, Treaties of Auriculotherapy, in French. In 1982, Bill Flocko coined the term ear reflexology. He had seen auriculotherapy charts in doctors, chiropractors, and acupuncturists' offices. These medical professionals were licensed to do auriculotherapy, where they could legally diagnose, prescribe, and use implements to treat specific illnesses. 
He reasoned that since working with fingers and thumbs on the reflex maps of the body on the feet and hands was called foot and hand reflexology, working with fingers and thumbs on the reflex map of the human body on the outer ears should be called ear reflexology. In 1996, Terry Olson, PhD, published the first book to contain side-by-side -side all the reflex map points, master points, and each functional point on the ears discovered by the French, Chinese, as well as some German points in the book Auriculotherapy Manual, Chinese and Western Systems of Ear Acupuncture. This book is included in our Ear Seed Acupressure Auriculotherapy Package. Primary points for beginners. To locate auricular points, identify ridges and trace arches of the auricle following the ear chart. Use the probe to lightly pressure the ear. When the right location is pressured, there is sometimes a mild pain or numb feeling. Below are three commonly used acupressure points. We have Shenmen, endocrine, and subcortex. So we have here the location on the outer ear of Shenmen, subcortex, and endocrine. Placement charts for specific conditions. The points introduced in the following placement charts are basic core treatment points for the specific conditions. Subject to the individual person, your acupressure therapist would be able to advise on additional relevant points to apply, taking considerations of the cause behind the condition upon complete diagnosis. This is an example of the ear chart. Now, we go to the current research studies to show that auricular therapy isn't just for pain. We have the study on dementia. Ear acupressure and massage therapy showed better results than the control group in relation to pain, anxiety, and depression. However, ear acupressure achieved the most improvements. Insomnia. Auricular acupuncture may effectively improve sleep quality in primary insomnia but further high-quality studies are needed. Smoking cessation. Smoking cessation-specific ear acupuncture interventions were superior to inactive controls. Three months follow-up and six months follow-up, but data were insufficient at 12 months. There was no superiority or inferiority for ear acupuncture compared with smoking cessation-specific behavioral therapy or smoking cessation specific body acupuncture. Stress. Statistically significant differences between the control and intervention groups were found in the two evaluations, with a treatment without protocol group showing the greatest effect. Individualized auricular therapy without a set of protocol may be helpful in reducing the effects of stress. Constipation. The meta-analysis of 15 trials showed a moderate Significant effect of auricular therapy in managing constipation compared with controls. The 15 RCTs also showed a moderate significant effect of auricular therapy in relieving constipation. Further rigorous RCTs from around the world are warranted to confirm the effect and safety of auricular therapy for constipation. Weight loss. Relative reduction of body weight was significantly greater in the Verum group. There was also a significant reduction of BMI in the Verum group. No patient reported side effects related to acupuncture. Electrical auricular acupuncture could be a safe, additive, non-pharmacological treatment in obese patients. Diabetes. The stimulation in the cavum conche of patients with type 2 diabetes mellitus may help decrease HbA1c BUN, serum creatinine, total cholesterol, and AST, and may be an effective treatment for type 2 diabetes mellitus. Hypertension. Acupuncture combined with auricular treatment for primary hypertension is better than captopril for the improvement of 24-hour ambulatory blood pressure, angiotensin 2 level, and creatinine level, and can improve clinical symptoms. Menstrual irregularities. Pharmaceutical treatment and auricular therapy are both effective for menstruation disorders, 
but auricular therapy is more effective on reduction of menstruation disorders compared to pharmaceutical therapy in women with polycystic ovary syndrome. Depression associated with obesity. Ear acupuncture therapy for obesity appears to also reduce depression of obese women. Further research into the effects of ear acupuncture in the management of obesity and depression is justified. Methamphetamine withdrawal. Electroacupuncture at the body points and auricular acupuncture play a significant therapeutic role in the treatment of methamphetamine withdrawal syndrome, anxiety, and depression. The longer time the treatment is with electroacupuncture at the body points, the more obvious the efficacy will be on the above symptoms. Migraine therapy. These results, though preliminary, are quite promising in supporting the effectiveness of ear acupuncture for treatment of migraine without aura. Myopia or nearsightedness in children. Non-invasive auricular therapy, if combined with external medical application, may improve the function of myopia in children. Children were receptive to auricular pressing technique. Temporomandibular disorders with stress. Auricular therapy was effective in the treatment of students with anxiety and TMDs, and auricular therapy was found to be effective in the treating anxiety and TMDs of university students. Post-traumatic stress disorder. Numerous benefits were observed following the auricular acupuncture treatments given to the veterans with PTSD. These treatments may facilitate healing and recovery for veterans experiencing PTSD. Further investigations are warranted into the mechanisms of action for auricular acupuncture in this population. Acute sore throat. Battlefield auricular acupuncture is effective in reducing sore throat pain for 24 hours and decreased use of pain medication for up to 48 hours. Also, there was no visible effect on hours missed from work. Chronic low back pain. Findings show that ear acupuncture is better than placebo in treating pain, but neither of the two has effect on postural condition on body sway. Labor pain. Women treated with auricular therapy had higher pain control and shorter labor duration. Placebo treatment showed a higher rate of cesarean section, while auricular therapy and control group have similar result. Immediate pain relief. Ear acupuncture may be a promising modality to be used for pain reduction within 48 hours with a low side effect profile. However, intensive research is needed to establish definitive evidence of a clinically significant difference from controls or from other pain treatments. Pain and anxiety. After 10 sessions, auricular protocol reduced the anxiety levels of nursing staff. However, further studies are suggested with new populations and in different contexts so that the results can be confirmed. Emergency pain relief. Ear acupuncture, either as standalone or as an adjunct technique, significantly reduced pain source and has potential benefits for use in the emergency department. However, further studies will help define acupuncture's role and if it reduces use of analgesic medications. Post-stroke depression combined with acupuncture. Acupuncture combined with auricular point treatment can help improve the clinical symptoms of post-stroke depression and are found to be effective and safe. Anterior aspect of the ear, the helix, the cruse of helix, and the tubercle of helix. The helix is the outermost portion of the auricle consisting of a rim-like structure. The cruse of helix is the beginning of helix, originates in cavum concha. The tubercle of helix is a small appendage on the middle border of the outer rim of helix, at the junction of upper third and middle two-thirds of helix, also called Darwin's tubercle. Many patients have very subtle and undefined tubercles, hence we must infer where it would be. 
To do this, divide the length of the ear into thirds. The tubercle is roughly at the junction of the upper third and lower two-thirds of the helix. Scaphoid fossa and ear apex. The scaphoid fossa. Fossas are depressions. Scaphoid fossa is depression between the helix and anti-helix, sometimes called the scapha. Ear apex is the height of the helix. If you gently fold the ear, the ear apex is located at the top of the helix where the fold occurs. Anti-helix, superior anti-helix screws, and the inferior anti-helix screws. The anti-helix is an elevated ridge-like structure medial to the helix and running parallel to it. Anti-helix and helix are separated by scaphoid fossa. It has three parts. The superior anti-helix screws is more lateral, superior branch of anti-helix. Bifurcates off the lower anti-helix screws at lumbago point. The inferior anti-helix screws is more medial, inferior branch of anti-helix. Bifurcates off lower anti-helix screws at lumbago point. Anatomy of the auricle. One is helix. Two, cruise of helix. Three, anti-helix. Three A, superior cruise of anti-helix. Three B, inferior cruise of anti-helix. Four, tragus. Five, anti-tragus. Six, intertragic notch. Seven lobule of auricle. Lower anti-helix screws and triangular fossa. The lower anti-helix screws is at the lower portion of the anti-helix. Inferior and superior anti-helix crura bifurcate off the lower anti-helix screws. Triangular fossa is a triangular depression bordered by superior and inferior antihelix crura. Next, we go to the conchas, cavum concha and simba concha. Cavum concha is the interior portion of the auricle that has a concave surface, separated from simba concha by cruise of helix and lies inferior to the cruise of helix. Simba concha, interior portion of the auricle, below inferior anti-helix screws, lies superior to cavum concha with the crus of helix dividing them. Tragus, supratragic notch, intertragic notch, antitragus, lobe, and the external auditory meatus. Tragus is a small ridge-like flap connected to lateral portion of the face directly anterior to external auditory meatus. Supratragic notch is the indentation above the tragus. The intertragic notch is the indentation below the tragus. Antitragus is a bump-like structure at the interior. Diagonal angle to the tragus. Lobe is the lowest portion of the auricle. Lower border of the intertragic notch demarcates lobes upper border. External auditory meatus is the canal medial to cavum concha behind the tragus that conducts sound waves into the inner ear. The root of the auricle or ear root is a depression of the posterior aspect of the ear just above the tendinous flap that connects the auricle to the head. Hypertension groove is a groove-like depression formed by the posterior border of the helix, runs in the upper third of the groove on the posterior aspect of the ear. The posterior aspect of ear proper includes the rest of the back of the ear. Shenman, foremost point in the treatment of virtually every disease. This is analogous to Shenman in the body. Ear Shenman's functions largely pertain to the heart. 
Like Badi Shenmen, the earth point and thus the sedation point of the heart meridian, ear Shenmen can add or take away dampness from the body, depending upon the needle technique employed. By virtue of this physiological function, when tonifying, Shenmen grounds the patient and calms the spirit, thus putting the patient into a state of receptivity for treatment. It should be the first point treated in any ear acupuncture prescription because of these energetics. The only contraindications for Shenmen are when there are already excess phlegm or dampness that would compromise the heart and lungs, as in COPD, or asthma or bronchitis characterized by excess phlegm. It is not contraindicated in other damp disorders such as leukorrhea, eczema, or obesity. Heart is supreme controller and governs blood. Thus, all blood disorders of vacuity, stagnation, extravasation, or rebelliousness can be treated with Shen Men. The Neijing reminds us, when the heart is serene, all pain is negligible, and this function is largely related to heart's role in blood regulation as well as a strong relationship of the heart to the mind and the spirit. Shen Men proves to be primary point in the treatment of pain. Because of its internal pathway of the eye system, the heart also has a strong connection to the eyes and can benefit many ophthalmological disorders. Brain Brain is the second most important auricular point and should be used in almost every ear prescription. Brain controls everything, all bodily systems, organs, parts, and thus it controls pain perception, movement, and the proper functioning of every body part. Sympathetic Another major auricular point instrumental in balancing the two branches of the autonomic nervous system, the sympathetic and parasympathetic branches. It promotes dilation of blood vessels, which aids in the relief of pain. Adrenal point strengthens the function of the kidney by controlling adrenal hormones involved in stress reactions. It reduces pain and quells anti-inflammatory responses. Endocrine point, sometimes referred to as internal secretion point, regulates all endocrine glands needed for homeostasis of internal bodily environment, useful in all endocrine, that is, hormonal disorders. Note, some sources also call triple warmer point internal secretion point. Kidney, the organ that encapsulates the person's genetic inheritance or constitution as well as the state of one's current health or condition and their interface. Useful in all chronic problems and treatments of domains that the kidney controls in Oriental and Western medicine. Kidney is root of the chi. It anchors and secures the chi, thus keeping the person healthy and balanced physically and psychologically. Kidney governs all the developmental life phases from conception through puberty and adulthood to menopause and aging. Kidney governs the anatomical and physiological domains of the back, the knees, the lower jaw, the blood, hearing, and the head hair. The liver. Organ responsible for free flow of chi in the body, thus it can move stagnation anywhere in the body. Liver, like heart and kidney, has a close relationship to the blood. While the heart dominates the blood and the kidney aids in its production, the liver stores the blood, releasing it in the daytime, during menstruation, and storing it at night. Blood storage problems or lack thereof belong to the liver. Liver dominates tendons and muscles. The Chinese character for tendon includes nerves, tendons, ligaments. Hence, the liver controls any disorder of these structures. Eyes are the external manifestations of the liver, and so the liver point is indicated in treatment of eye disorders. Many functions detailed under Shenmen are also applicable for the heart, but heart point directly relates to the heart organ or meridian complex in Chinese medicine. Heart point is synergistically reinforced when used with Shenmen, but targets treatment as related to heart itself. Spleen, like all organ points, has numerous physiological functions. It dominates the muscles, making it involved in all muscular movement and health. When spleen is not functioning properly, it results in the production of damp. Spleen is responsible for a healthy mind 
and a balanced spirit. As part of Oriental Digestive System, it is the primary organ involved in digestion and assimilation of nutrients. The diaphragm is an extremely powerful point. It assists in respiration and in moving the chi of the liver. The diaphragm, through its connection with the liver, moves the blood when it is stagnant. Diaphragm also can make an inactive auricle reactive. Thus, it is a good point to use for this reason as well. Noget calls diaphragm point point zero, and Olson calls it master point, implying that it promotes homeostasis. Supplemental points. Fingers are an area for all finger disorders. Wrist is a local point for all wrist disorders. Gallbladder pertains to organ of gallbladder that regulates release of bile to small intestine for digestive purposes. It treats all gallbladder disorders. Stomach pertains to stomach organ meridian complex. It is vital to the initial breakdown of food. Lung points are used for respiratory problems. Lung points contribute to energy level as lungs are master of the chi. Applicable in skin problems and dermatological disorders and healing of mucous membranes because lung dominates skin and mucous membranes. Large intestine is local point for large intestine problems. Tripal warmer regulates three jowls, their functions, interrelationships. Cheek is local point for cheek disorders. Jaw is local point for jaw disorders. Brainstem is local point for all functions of brainstem. Brainstem treats shock and neurovegetative disorders. Relaxed muscle is a specialized point within liver area. It is a powerful point in pain relief because it relaxes contraction of muscles, which lead to pain. Ovary is local point for menopause, infertility, ovulatory problems. Ear apex treats liver young rising symptoms like hypertension, conjunctivitis, allergies, migraines. Eye is main local point for eye disorders. I1 and I2 are clinically effective points for eye problems. Inner ear is local point for inner ear disorders. Mouth point can be used as local point for stuttering, aphasia, dysphasia, oral ulcerations. Mouth point is also called anti-fatigue point. One reason it acts this way is that mouth point is located close to external auditory meatus, which is a very tender and delicate area and elicits a strong stimulus upon treatment. Second, Mouth point, when stimulated in a tonifying manner, promotes eating, which gives one the energy derived from food. Hence, it combats fatigue. Sciatic can be used for treatment of sciatic nerve. Cervical vertebrae are local points for disorders of cervical vertebrae. And the neck is local point for neck disorders. Thank you very much for your attention.